Would you like to introduce introduce our Zerg player? Yes, so here at Star Station, at the bottom left position, we have the Zerg player from Team Trolldom, it says here. But like we said before, he is, of course, on Liquid and it's Snoot. All right. And his opponent in the top right position as the red Terran player from Team Acer, it is MMA. I just want to try this. It's, it's pronounced Trolldom? <laughs> like, yeah, that was pretty good actually. Trolldom. Trolldom, okay. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird, but yeah. yeah. Or actually, I guess he has some kind of Nor Norwegian uh, sound I, of it. I was gonna too, say, it sounds so like. I might like, not be doing it, it perfectly. <laughs> it sounds like. Uh, it makes me feel like a dwarvish clan or something, you know? like. <laughs> yeah, that's about how you sounded. Okay, so what do you expect us to see here? Do you think MMA is going to go for some really greedy play, like Command Center first, or not? Nah, seems like he's going to put down a barracks here very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. MMA is kind of one of those players that still likes the Reaper play. Um, he hasn't yet queued up another SCV, and yeah, there he goes. He's going to rally it over there. Um, in most of the TVZs that I've seen MMA, it's it's generally the Reaper opening. Um, yeah. He'll go Command Center first every now and again. Um, but this is also one of those maps, you know, that cliff space, so good for Reapers. Snoot, hatch first. Um, and I guess I have a question for you, Matalisk. In in Wings of Liberty, Snoot was, I guess a lot of people would say he's really lair heavy. Uh, ZVT, he liked going for the, the roach play a lot. Um, how how exactly, like, what could, what could we expect here in ZVT from him now in this, uh, in this match? Mm, I would say Snoot has kind of two different styles in ZVT. Uh, one is the Hyun style that we saw before, uh, when Hyun played versus... Now I'm even forgetting who he played. Who was Hyun playing? Ryung, right. So, uh, uh, it's very lair heavy, uh, Roachling, Baneling attacks, and uh, yeah, that, that's very common to see from Snoot, but more and more we can see a Mutalisk play from him, and I actually like that more. Uh, he's getting more and more comfortable with this this lair uh, Mutalisk play, so I think that we are going to get to see some of that. He can also do those all-ins, of course. Uh, we can see a lot of all-ins going from Snoot, uh, early Roachling, Baneling attacks, but um, yeah, I think he's gonna go into Muras. That's the normal standard play from Snoot at the moment. All right, we'll have to see. He is uh, taking a nice, nicely timed gas as this Reaper makes its way across the field. Um, the Reaper, of course, can get, get the scouting information. This is one of those few maps where Reapers can do a lot of damage um, just based on the layout of it. So that command center is going up here in the top oh, position. Snoot made well. no links, actually. Usually, Zerg players make like two links or something just to deal with uh, potential Reapers, but Snoot made none. Uh, and he's going to save that drone, making a spore caller. Uh, very good. Uh, okay, he's not going to lose the drones, or is he? Oh, it's, <laughs> oh wow. It's... I really think it's better to go for, like, ah, oh, he lost a drone. I think it's actually good to go for, like, oh, no, he lost another drone. Making two links or so to deal with the Reaper together with those queens. I think it's the best way to deal with the Reapers. Because uh, then you can, yeah, then you don't have to make as many spore crawlers off of the drones. But Snoot is really good with this, uh, making the spores over and over to save those dronies and... Uh, Two more queens. Oh, actually, only one more queen on the way, uh, and that speed on the way also. But he's continuing to mine gas. So, are we going to see some Roachling Bane aggression here from Snoot? Well, actually, that'd be very interesting to see. It, it wouldn't be a, a bad idea from him, as MMA already has a third command center on the way. So, the Reapers have come in and they've done a good amount of poking. But I, I think a lot of the, in, in a lot of situations where the Reapers can come in, the the absolute maximum number of drones that you want. Uh, or at least that the, you can get away with losing as a Zerg is two. Like if if the if the Terran gets more than two, then you're kind of like really into some heavy damage um, scenario. But he, he only lost two, um, which you know, given that he didn't make those Zerglings, I, I think was is more than manageable. But here we go. This is uh this is that that Roach Warren done. Link speed's about to finish up. The Overlord speed upgrade is coming in, and I find this kind of interesting. It looks like he doesn't want to really commit to the Roaches just yet. No, I think he's making, he's just going to make those three roaches or maybe up to five just to be able to secure that third base. 
<clears throat> it looked very much like he was going to go for some uh, some really aggressive play, but I guess uh, with MMA scouting and uh, seeing what was going on, he decided to just uh, make some roaches to get the third base out, and uh, there is nothing MMA can do about the third base going down. Overlord Speed is out, so he's going to be able to scout here. Overlord going into the main base of, um, of MMA, and he knows what's up. Nice to get that get that information and he doesn't see anything crazy he sees the third command center uh, And I, you know a lot of Terran players really been sticking to this style uh, the three CC I think uh, we, we saw like one game the Akalon game um, that tiebreaker with uh, The two barracks opening earlier on but the Hellions dancing around and the roaches can shove them away That's the cool thing about the roaches you kind of mentioned this it's to secure the third But it can also be used Deny this tower and really deny map control from MMA since uh, Hellions not so great one versus one against roaches. He's actually making some f some more roaches. I'm wondering what he's going with this. Uh, he's taking both the third and the fourth base. Very typical snoot. So uh, we have to see here when he's taking the gases. That's kind of in, in, an indication on what snoot is going to do. If he's going to stay on less g geysers, uh, he will probably go for some Roachling Bane aggression off of maybe 1-1 one, one upgrades or maybe even 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and if he's going to take more gas now very soon then and go up to that lair, he's probably going to go for Ling Bane Spire after this. Uh, those roaches are still just to be able to deal with Hellions very easily, uh, so it doesn't mean at all that he's going to stay on Roach Tech. All right, I, I kind of like it, and you know, this this does seem to be that strategy that you talked about, that Hyun-esque style. You know, we, we got to see Hyun um, do a little bit of that earlier on, so I, I kind of like this. And uh, Roach is continuing to just push these Hellions around. Uh, it does need to be a little bit careful. There's not too much that could really stop the Hellions from going for some sort of run-by, but that's, that's kind of the beauty of having the tower, being able to see things like that coming. And... I kind of like this MMA getting that third command center landed at a nice early timing. I think one of the hardest parts of dealing with that Roach style is uh, a big bust that attack the third on this map. The third is so wide open. Um, it, it can really make strategies like the one that Snoot's doing uh, quite effective versus Terran. Definitely. Uh, we also see that MMA has, has quite some mines spread out, so even if there was some attack coming from Snoot in the near future, he would have a very good setup. And I think that he's going to move them out very soon. He's making a bunker at his third command center, and I think we might see maybe an extra one or two bunkers coming up just in case of a Roachling Bane uh, aggressive style. And uh, yeah, MMA is actually moving out here. Do you think he's going to commit to something without medivacs or...? Well, this seems, it honestly seems like a, a fairly standard shove that Terran players like to do around the 10, 10, 12 minute mark. Um, with the Hellions, it's very strong because you can clean up a lot of Zerglings. It's, Zerglings don't alone don't really hold this that well if you've kept the Hellions alive. Um, but the, the big focus is to kill Creep, and in this situation, it's going to be to do something about this really fast fourth base. There's not too much on the map um, for Snoot, but as I say that, a lot of Zerglings, 32 being queued up, 10 Banelings, can MMA do the damage he wants to do to this fourth base before those Banelings arrive? Let's see the roaches coming in here. There's so many of them. There's no Baneling speed just yet, and the Widow Mines actually not managing to detonate on anything important, but keeping the Marauders in front to tank those Banelings. Still, Snoot able to shove this force back, so very nice uh, defense there. Yeah, I think that uh, Snoot did a good job holding this off, but we should remember that uh, what MMA did here was that he forced a lot of Banelings, and that means less Mutalisks. So I think that MMA actually got out of he ahead out of this, this fight here. So very nice little push from here, him forcing so many Banelings, and also uh, just forcing Snoot in general to make units. That's not something that a Zerg player wants to do. They want to make drones. So uh, I think it was a good attack by, by MMA. Also keeping Snoot on his side of the map. Yeah, actually a really good point. And you know the other thing to consider, as I kind of mentioned this, was uh, sometimes used by Terran players to kill off creep, but there's actually there's actually no... Uh, there's not really much creep spread there for Snoot. He hasn't really been pressing it as much this game. Um, you know, some, some other Zerg players see like Scarlet hitting like halfway across the map at this point, but focusing on the defense. MMA with that drop in the fourth base, starting to pick off a few of those drones, and at the same time, a drop on the left side. He's got a huge force, actually. He manages to pick off a few more. The Mutalisks are coming out. He's actually got a meter with three hit points attacking that <laughs> Mac. So, 
You know, he was actually on 90 drones when I said that. Oh my god, how could he manage to make so many drones? Taking that third and fourth base at the same time really was a good choice by Snoot. Uh, and uh, yeah, now he's at a comfortable drone supply. Uh, he's getting that infestation pit, so he's trying not to delay his 3-3 all too much, even though he's going for Ling Bane Muta, and that's very important. We see so many Zerg players going for 2-2 Ling Bane Muta, and then they are staying on 2-2 like forever. Uh, when Turin gets the 3-3 out, it's really hard for the Zerg player, but Snoot is going to be on top of this. He's going to get the 3-3 out and go for the Mutalisk, and I think that going up to that fast 8 gas is uh, the reason that he's able to do so. Yeah, it, it really comes down to how fast Snoot took this fourth base. He's having an absurd amount of economy, but MMA is getting ready to parade across the map once again. Those reinforcements streaming through. A big Zergling uh, potential counterattack. He's trying to at least eat up this reinforcement line, maybe even just run into the natural at the main base. Uh, Snoot is, and these command centers for MMA, he's trying to shut them down, trying to focus a, a few of them down, and we have at the same time the double drop on the left side of the map, so MMA's doing what he can, he cancels the command center, immediately starts rebuilding it, he, he really doesn't want to be deterred, this bunker with one marine not doing too much, and MMA's oh, actually... Oh, and you know, Snoot spotted those two medivacs going into the oh, main base, no. so, wow, he's gonna lose everything there. Let's see, ah, uh, he didn't get to borrow that widow mine, that could have saved him some... Uh, if he got a good shot off of, of those Muralisks, but nothing done with those Medivacs, so... Uh, but on the other hand, MMA is attacking also the fourth base of Snoot at the same time, so I think that his multitasking uh, is really on top here, and uh, Snoot might have some trouble dealing with this. All the Mutas are coming though, so I think that he will be able to clean this up. Uh, doesn't want to take any risks, risks though, attacking into those Widow Mines. It can be a bit scary with only Muralisks. Yeah, especially with these Marines streaming across the field. There's so much anti-air for MMA. The Medivac's doing so well. The Banelings coming in now for Snoot should be able to help, but those Widowmine cooldowns, like you said, uh, Natalus, they're, they're turning off, and now he can continue to bring, can keep bringing this pressure forward. Just wanting to inch those Widowmines and some fantastic splitting from MMA. These Mutas cannot press in just yet. Wow, I must say that MMA is really good at splitting up his units. He's doing very well here, and I think that this push might actually even kill Snoot here. Uh, it's going to be hard for him. The Widow Mines are soon going to be able to smash o all over those Mutas once again. And uh, wow. Yeah, Snoot was able to clean that up. And Overseer is coming by and is going to clean up all the Widow Mines. And I actually thought that that uh, MMA was going to be able to do a bit more there. Yeah, very, uh, very crazy engagement. Actually, does a great job of dodging these Widow Mine attacks. Doesn't really take too much damage from those. In fact, dragging some of the damage. Onto those Marines. MMA is on a full retreat. Snoot with a huge supply lead. Now he's really turning this back onto our Terran player. Both players with those 2 2 upgrades. And Snoot actually not missing a beat. Both of them are dead even on that 3 3 upgrade um, completion. Now the Widow Mine's starting to get a couple of decent shots, but the supply is so good for Snoot. He's focusing down on these command centers. MMA is trying to take additional bases. He has a command center on the north and east side of the map. Picks off that orbital command. There's another one still left a little bit bare. And Snoot wants to get on top of the production. He needs to be very careful approaching this, though. The bunkers and the Widow Mine so good defensively. Yeah, wow. Snoot has to... I mean, I feel like if MMA gets up his fourth and fifth base here, uh, then he's going to be in a very good position, even though it looks very bad for him right now. But I don't think that Snoot is going to let that happen. And looking at the upgrades, Snoot is at 3-3. He's gonna, going for the plus 3 attack on his Mutalisks. So he's very on top of the upgrades, and that's something that usually makes Zerg players lose uh, in the long run versus uh, Bio when they go Ling Bane Yuda, as I pointed out before. So I think that Snoot is doing really well here with, with the upgrades, and um, MMA, if he can just keep to at least the fourth base, then maybe he can get back into the game. Yeah, he really just needs to keep that income going because the third base is so low. The main base basically gone. The natural uh, quite low as well. And all MMA has, he has this east orbital, but we see the mules dropping so many of them. Eight, like seven mules. It's actually it's actually ridiculous. He's got basically two. <laughs> he's got like three mining bases worth of mineral income. And now Snoot wow. sees this. He's coming in. That planetary fortress is done though. And with this many Marines, I don't know if he can break into this just yet. Well, wow, Snoot got a bit desperate there, I think. He's like, oh my god, he has so many mules, he has this mine, mining base here. So he's just morphing in a lot of banelings, and it's going to try to shut this base down. So let's see if he can succeed. Uh, no very good Widowmine hits there, and I think that Snoot might be able to take this base out, and that would be a huge win for him. 
Yeah, he manages to grab it, and the SCVs are also going to be left exposed. There's still a decent number of Mutalisks remaining. He can immediately move on to the third base. There are some mines here. He'll need to be careful. Uh, a lot of the Mutas are actually taking significant damage, but he's cleaned everything up. MMA still has a decent amount of supply left, but Snoot is just bringing the pain, Mutalisk. Mass Marines coming in into the third base of Snoot, and I think that they could actually do some damage. They might even get uh, be able to snipe the third hatchery. Snoot, on the other hand, he has two more hatcheries going up he hasn't he doesn't even have any drones mining there but he can uh, easily move over the drones from the third base uh, to one of the new bases so it doesn't really matter that he lost that hatchery to be honest yeah that's the nice thing about way snoot's been playing this out he has so much here and look at this mma dropping long distance mules he's oh, like uh, i'm landing this command center i need the money desperately they, like i said he, he doesn't have anything really left anymore inside of his bases he's, he's running on fumes um, but now, Snoot, we're starting to see that supply advantage become something real. 17 Banelings. He's moving in without his Banelings. Perhaps a bit risky, but he doesn't care. He has enough to throw this over anyway. Oh, and he almost managed, or MMA almost managed to pick off all of the Overseers, but uh, Snoot managed to keep one alive. And that's very important. He needs to be able to see those Widow Mines so he can kill them off before they splash all over the Mutalisks. That can be so dangerous. But I don't think that even good Widow Mine hits can uh, save MMA there. And he 